this is the final wiring. Uh, this is everything on the underside, and it'll probably be the last time that I touch it until I have to troubleshoot something. So even though I'm not going to have um, all of the panels in the corners, the upper right, lower right, that kind of thing, uh, I have all the wiring for the sensors and the lights set up ready to go. So when I do add those, it'll just be something I do on the top side. Glad to be done with that. At this point, really even before, this pad is already ready to use for a four panel. But I wanted to do a little bit more work on the lights just before I set things up for testing. One important thing to keep in mind, uh, originally I was going to use these panels that I just had like laying around. These are old uh, DDR pump it up panels. You know, I, I think it looks pretty cool with uh, this set of panels, but it's really not what I'm looking for. I decided maybe about a month ago that I wanted to go for a different look. The downside is that this is going to be a little bit more expensive to do, but I think it's going to look awesome when it's done. So like my other FSR pad, I'm going to use clear polycarbonate panels that have a window film on the bottom so that I can uh, really show the color underneath. Real arcade panels are awesome, they look very cool, but you really can't change the color because there's only a certain amount of um, place the light can actually come out and it's really designed to be a certain color or white. So you know, if you try to show like blue light through a yellow panel, eh, it just doesn't look very good and you, you barely notice it. My idea is to have uh, all of these nine panels or you know, probably more more common I would have the eight panels in the center panel but they would all be clear polycarbonate with the window film and each one would be its own color uh, when it's idle then when you press it it would turn white maybe since I have RGB I can change these to all sorts of different colors I can you know change the color that it turns when you press it or the the idle color for each arrow but to do that I'm really gonna need those clear panels and uh, that means waiting to get them recut in the meantime, I can work on the software a little bit to get the lights kind of working how I want them, at least for the four lights that I have. Okay, so I know code is a little bit boring for people if you're not interested in it, but I wanted to give a quick overview of how the lights implementation works that I worked up. I'll just go over this from a very high level. This is just a fork of Sujit's repo. If you want to find a link to this, you can find it in the description of this video. So this is showing everything that's different between uh, Sujit's repo and mine. And uh, anything in green has been added, anything in red has been removed. So just a reminder that my fast LED implementation is going to be using this uh, device here, which is called a P9813. And if you're interested in getting these, they're, they're very cheap on AliExpress. They're a little bit more expensive on Amazon. So the first thing that my code does is it pulls in the fast LED library and we define how many LEDs we have in our strip. The way this works is I have one LED strip. So I'm kind of, the software thinks that I have um, an addressable LED strip essentially. Each uh, one of these devices is going to be powering one of the LEDs. So that's why when I wired them up they're all daisy chained off of each other so that means that I have to control these LEDs in order so 0 would be the first LED in the strip and 9 would be the last uh, I also define the data and clock pins um, this is something that this module needs I'm gonna quickly just jump past this for a minute we'll come back to it I also modified these areas where this is what Sujit had before where he was ha he had that simple um, digital write out for uh, controlling lights. This worked with that MOSFET that I showed you earlier out of the box. I left that in, but below that, this is where I have the code to uh, activate the lights. And when we want to turn the light off, we just run that, that code here. In the fast LED library, to turn a light off, you set the color to black. So down here in the setup function, uh, this is where I add the LEDs uh, and make the fast LED library aware that they exist. The first time when we turn on the pad, I loop through all of the panels and I set all the lights to their idle color. 
So I, I scrolled past this earlier, but I have arrays for the idle color and the active color. So that, you know, maybe by default, the up panel is going to be red, but when you press it and activate the panel, it'll turn white. So when you turn on the machine, we want to set all of the panels to their idle colors. Otherwise, they'll be off or maybe be the color that they were before. So this just kind of resets them back to where they need to be. Back at the top here, there's a couple of different arrays. The first is the panel LED. And this is essentially a map so that uh, because when I wired the LEDs in that strip, you know, they were daisy chained off of each other, zero was under glow. And then um, the, the first LED in the strip after the underglow was actually like upright or something like that. And then the second was up. So I needed a way of mapping LED positions to the button positions and that's what this uh, array is doing. These arrays here are defining the idle and active colors and I had this idea that I could have different profiles. So here you can see there's color profile and this is a multi-dimensional array so the first uh, well, let's look at the second one here. This is the second idle color array that's inside of here. So the first LED is the underglow, and I'm setting that to blue. The left panel is blue, up is red, down is red, and right is blue. So this is kind of like what I'm calling the ITG profile because ITG's panels are red and blue. So when the, the panels are idle, meaning they're not being pressed, they're going to show red, blue, red, blue. When you activate the panel, um, the underglow stays blue, and then uh, the left, up, down, and right all turn white. So you could see that if I wanted to select this profile, I would set color profile to 1. So I can just quickly change this, and it's going to select different idle or active colors from the array. That selection is done here. You could see, like, we, when we're setting the active color, we select the index based on the color profile and then we set the color. So yeah I know that's a little bit technical but uh, so far I've defined five different profiles. I have my test uh, one that has a few different colors uh, ITG, DDR, Brazilian which is just yellow and green and then uh, Frozen which I was thinking it would be cool if there was one that was white all the time idle and then when you press it it turns blue. You know, you can imagine, like, maybe for Halloween, I'll have one that's, like, orange, or for Christmas, I'll have one that's green and red. Uh, there's all sorts of ideas. So at this point, uh, I really wanted to test out the pad, just get a feel for how it's working. The first thing I had to do was to get some corner brackets to hold down these panels. I've got a bunch of these left over, but uh, the ones I have left over are really dirty. So... I just quickly uh, clean them up a little bit. My method for cleaning small stainless steel parts lately has been to use uh, these little melamine sponges that uh, we actually got these in Japan but they're the same thing as Mr. Clean Magic Erasers I, I'm pretty sure anyway. And uh, what I do is just get a little bit of warm water and uh, get them wet, try to loosen anything up. Um, sometimes I'll scrape something that's a little bit hard with my fingernail or a piece of plastic and then I just grab the sponge and just slowly rub it with water and it seems to kind of like polish up the stainless steel like very well. These little things I think are a little bit abrasive. It's kind of like an eraser on a pencil. Uh, so I, I wouldn't use it a ton and I wouldn't use it if there was a coating on any of the material that I wanted to preserve. But for stainless steel parts like this, if you go along the grain, it gives it a really nice finish. I have a list of uh, unanswered questions about this project and one of the big ones was what am I even going to do with this pad? I really don't even have that much room for it. I was thinking about making another Stepmania setup um, which would you know, mean I'd have to buy a computer and another monitor and a stand and all that stuff and then probably run Ethernet to it as well. It sounded like a bit of a pain um, so I started leaning towards the idea of putting it in front of my existing uh, setup for Stepmania 
and just kind of cramming it in between my uh, Dedi cab and my DDR pad. I measured it and it, it, it like just about fit with like a couple inches to spare. The downside is that I had to move my Dedi cab pads over like six inches and then I had to obviously move my DDR pad and then the new FSR pad could slide in there but everything is now going to be super tight compared to the nice you know space I have around each pad. So maybe not ideal but for now it means I can use the existing computer with all my streaming setup and my cameras. It also means that I can now explore setting up a versus setup so I can have player one on one FSR pad and player two on the other and I can play together with somebody assuming somebody would ever want to come over and play this game. Anyways, moving uh, arcade equipment uh, by yourself is kind of tricky and uh, it takes a long time. But last Friday I spent a couple hours and uh, very slowly moved all the equipment over to where it needs to be. Moving the Dedicab pads, uh, I had to split them apart and then I kind of shuffled them half an inch at a time until they got to the spot where I needed them. The DDR pad, I slid a little dolly underneath uh, one side, and then I picked up the other side and I could roll it around very easily. That worked out great. Then with my wife's help, uh, we lifted up the new pad and stuck it in its place, and uh, that was essentially it. Now it's in its new home, and uh, I think for the meantime, if I need to access the bottom of this pad for any of the wires, I'm going to sort of put it on jack stands and kind of slide under there like a mechanic. And with that, I slapped a little bit of modding under each panel just to get it to the right height. I'll show more about that in the next video when I talk about the new panels I'm getting. But at this point, I was ready for my first test of the pad. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome! BigFollows.com, everyone. You heard it here first.